Okay, let's just get to go through the uh, brew to you. Electronics, just talk through this. Um, you've obviously got the slides. There's a, um, there's a little bit of a link there to this video, which is quite useful. Um, so components wise, we've got fairly fairly limited components on this electronics. Obviously, we've got the servos, etc. that you fit in there. And you will need to probably make some custom cables, which I'll talk through as we move on. But effectively, all we're really doing is using a single battery. Um, I'm using a 3S 11.1 volts. Uh, six channel receiver, you only need six channels with this particular model, uh, a power switch of your choice, you can put a fuse as well on the battery which is kind of recommend to uh, protect the cables, so it's quite useful that, um, but again you know that, that's uh, that's pretty much up to you, um, and then the speed controller, watch out on the speed controller, um, the picture one is the one that I'm using, it's a 5 amp dual bi-directional speed controller for a 2 to 3 S battery, so and, and you, you can any of those things can go wrong you can get a lower ampage you can get a really high ampage and a low voltage in which case it'll burn out um, you can get a unidirectional one which means it only goes forward and not backward <laughs> so watch out what you're looking for is a dual at least five amps you can get higher than five amps but at least five amps you want it bi-directional you want uh, to support minimum of a three three s three cells which is 11 point one volt motor um and the motors we're using in this are high powered i wouldn't recommend putting cheaper or or, or less powered motors the, these are pulling five amps for quite a small motor so they're really quite chunky and and you need that power on a on a track droid so those are the basic components that we're going to use so let's talk about the power circuit i mean first of all check on lipos the brilliant the safe I've used them for years and had any issues with them, but do make sure that you're aware of all the safety features because they, they can set on fire if not handled correctly. Um, and also there's these little things that you can plug in, which you can see on the top right hand card side there, which are LiPo battery monitors, voltage monitors. Basically what you, do, you don't want, you don't want a LiPo to run out of voltage otherwise uh, to run completely flat otherwise it's throw it away and get a new lipo equally if you ps1 stab one um they, they will burst into flames so you've got to you've got to be fairly careful with them but you know handled normally then there shouldn't be an issue uh, use a switch if you want to switch it off and on uh, and you can you can put your switch wherever you need it just interrupts the main power line out of the lipo and again recommend you just put a potentially a uh, fuse in between that switch and the battery just to protect the cables um, uh, your choice on fuse but you know a fairly high one a 10 amp uh, 12 amp fuse would, would will suffice on these the, the motors stall at five amps each so if you stall both of them you pull 10 amps through but uh, that's stalling so under normal running it's only going to run one or one or two amps it's not going it's not going to pull huge amount of current through there the way we're running the circuit is basically we power from the battery we power the speed controller and the speed controller has actually got a 5 volt power supply that comes out of that that powers everything else so it's a really simple connection power into the battery side of the um, speed controller make sure that you get the positive to positive and negative to negative out of that you've got two cables which run your motor and then you've got two three pin connectors that actually power your um, RC receiver and you can use your RC receiver as a way of um, effectively powering the rest of the, the model okay so I'll just talk a little bit about the servos we've got in here we've got we've got we've got quite a few in this model so you've got um, six servos in total because it's quite a lot of animation um, so you've got the little FS90R in the head that's a con that's a continuous servo so it goes all the way around constantly and that literally just plugs into channel four on the fly sky, which is the left right stick on the left hand side. So that, that turns your, your your head left and right. I'll cover the arms because the arms are directly linked to the drive. So I'll leave those for a second, but then I'll move on to the can. So what I do on the can is I'm using the channel three, which is your up down stick on your left hand side, um, as your um, as a way of lifting the um, as a way of lifting the can lifting the lid so if you lift so you keep that stick all the way down and your can lid is shut and you lift it up and the can lid will open and then if all the way down left and right will turn the head of the droid okay 
and then channels five and six, which link to those little knobs at the top of the fly sky, um, the, the rotating knobs, they go to the two cam lift. So the way you control it is you've got your right stick, which drives, and then your left stick actually controls the dome. If you push it up and down, it'll lift the lid. And then once you want to deliver a can, you can turn the knob um, on the controller on channels five and six, and that will open and control the knob. But basically, where you, all we're really doing is plugging all of these channels directly into the receiver. So the, the, the head's going into channel four, the lid is going into channel three, and the two cam lifts are going into channels five and six. I'll cover a little bit on the next page on the splitting signal. Right, the arm servo. So you've seen the way that it drives around. What it's effectively doing is, it's, is we're, we're splitting the signal that comes out of the receiver into two set in, in, into two kind of uh, cables. So the way you do that is you take the orange cable and literally you solder two orange cables to one orange cable and then you insulate it. You do the same with the red, you do the same with the brown. So what you end up with is one input, orange, one input for brown, one input for red. And out of each of those, you've got two cables. So two signals, two powers and two browns per channel. And then what you can do then, if you if you make those cables up, the way I did it is I made female cables that, that plug directly into the RC receiver. And I made male connectors which go the other end that I can just plug the standard servos in. So I made the cable up. I plugged the two arm servos into channel one and channel two into one side of that split cable. And the other side of split cable goes straight into your um, into your speed controller uh, in, in that three pin and the one pin. So you'll only need power going from one of the channels, channel one or two and ground to that speed controller if you're using the similar speed controllers to the one shown. And the other one is just a straight signal. And as long as you've got a common ground, that will work. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, what what that means is this this signal on the um, on the orange color, the signal for the orange color um, effectively controls your speed. It also controls the arm. So depending how you configure how you drive it, that's what I was saying at the top, is you can either use tank mixing on the receiver so what will happen is out of the receiver it will send two signals independently for each motor which means that the arms will move to drive each motor independently or you can do the mixing on the receiver so that receiver actually mixes does the tank mixing for you so what happens is the um, one arm does the throttle and the other arm does the steer now, if you don't like the orientation of this so that it pulls the arm back, but actually it goes forward, what you can do is reverse the polarity of the motors and go into the setup on the RC and reverse the channels on the RC. But that's all configuration. Effectively, you'll be able to get this running just connecting it up with these with these splitting cables. And then if you want to play around with some of the configuration, you can do to change the way that those arm servos actually move. And really, um, that's pretty much it. So there's no logic, there's no Arduino's, it's literally power and six channel receiver. The only complexities were split in there, that those signals for the speed controller uh, that run the two arms. Just, just a little bit on tank mixing. So these are the settings for tank mixing on the uh, Flysky. There's lots of stuff on the internet on configuring the Flysky and it's worth getting familiar with all the settings and what they all do. Um, but the tank mixing for Fly Sky is where you make, you do two mixes, um, mix one and mix two. And what you have is a different master. So if you look on there, on mix one, channel one is a master. On mix two, channel two is a master. And mix one is a positive on both positive and negative mix. And on mix two, it's a negative on both positive and negative mix. So you can see once you've got that, what you get is you get full channel, full channel mixing. What you've got to watch is that the depending how your receiver is set up, you may not need to put the mixes on first. So the way I tend to do it is I'll plug the RC setup just as I've shown on all electronics, just as a basic drive, lift the droid up a little bit so it's not going to go running off anywhere, and then see what what controls I'm getting out of the out of the different sticks. If I'm if I'm getting mixing or non mixing, I can then start to play around with um, switching the mixing on at the receiver, um, sorry, at the transmitter, 
um, or not. And and also, you know, I can I can start to look at um, whether I want to configure or reverse some of the channels so that it's it's going in the right direction. So, but but you know, all of that is quite. It's not something I'll be able to cover quickly or simply on this. It's something that you just play around with on trial and error. But the key thing is that you actually get both the motors running and that they do react to going forward, back, left and right. If that's working, great. It's just a matter then of configuring and, and switching things around a little bit. But I thought I'd just put this in a little bit on, on tank mixing. You may not need it if the mixing is actually on the on the controller. Um, and that that's pretty much it. So really simple power out of that. You've, you've got um, out of the speed controller, you've got two cables. They will go into the splitter cables. <clears throat> you've got most of your servos are connected directly apart from your arms. And then your arms are the ones that split between the power and the um, and servos. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to add extra electronics to the head and put lights in and all that kind of stuff, which I know uh, we do quite a, quite a lot of modifications and stuff, then by all means, go ahead. Um, what I may also do is put in some extra... Uh, different models for upgrading or changing the motors so we can try different motors in there for faster slower more torque more speed type things um, so we'll play around with that and obviously uh, what I've said is that it will work with the full set of the um, baby Astromex um, and I have got some new um, uh, pilots that I'm looking to put in there and also we'll be releasing some new agreeables so you can customize it however you want hopefully that was useful Thank you very much.